Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It is a Friday afternoon. Finished work and just had a shower and washed my hair. But it is about to rain. <laughs> what I'm actually gonna do is jump on Instagram. I'm going to put up a questions. I want you guys to ask some interesting questions and I'm gonna do an, another Q&A. So that's what this video is. I'm gonna bring the cruiser in because I actually need to replace my door handle. I've just realized my door's open and it's rained. That's fine. I didn't close it because I can't open it. Oh, it's fine. Anyway, so I'll show you my door handle. It is cracked the entire way along. Okay, so I completely changed spots, but it is so hot right now. I'm gonna post it up now, otherwise we're not gonna get any questions. Hey guys, happy Friday. So I'm currently filming a YouTube video. I'm doing another Q&A because it's been a while since I've done one. So we're gonna make this one a bit different. We're going to ask questions that nobody else is answering or Topics that nobody else is talking about. So if you've asked any question ever and you haven't got an answer, everyone seems to be avoiding it. Like what do people want to know that they can't find anywhere else? Ask me those questions. I want the really interesting ones, the deep ones, the exciting ones, the controversial ones, whatever. And it can be about absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be forward drive related, life related, relationship related, job related, whatever. I'm gonna start doing my door handle because we're gonna actually do something while we wait for questions. I never thought that I would want central locking canopy, but living in Townsville and with crime, I lock it all the time and then I have to do this. So it wouldn't be that bad of a thing. I need this tool set. Yes, I still have my trusty, trusty Stanley kit. Any OGs would have remembered that from the chicken swivel hub video. Oh, it is hot. Top knot. I bet you this rain is really loud. But I can still do my door and we'll just montage it. Hey, I don't know if you know, but your door windows are open. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So it's raining. Well, I just noticed. So I'm here telling you. <laughs> I'd just like to thank Snap On Tools for sponsoring this episode. I don't mind to slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor I don't mind selling out or playing cover song Just as long as friends and family sing along And I don't need more money or faster car no. Don't need a magazine to call me a superstar no. I'm gonna take this little house and make a home And I'll never have to face my nights alone Okay, let's try that again oh, Cause in my God, heart so I used to be Why am I? This is my life, right? And on my face I feel it Yeah, it's true To buy land, buy air, buy sea And that is how it's supposed to be now, and that much I can say. Now. 
okay guys so it is the next day pretty much rained all night so i couldn't film in the shed but i thought i'd just show you what i'm up to so anybody who's been following for a while knows that i have great northern marlin on my mud flaps which i drew they'd be about five or six years old and the, the paint pen lasts a fair while but my mud flap actually folded up under my tire and rubbed half the marlin off normally i can just touch up the marlins with paint pen and they're fine yeah this laser engraver i'll be able to take my drawing and put it engraved on properly So somewhere last night of me driving my car out, I lost my keys. This is what I have been doing today. Fun fact, these are apparently PVC. When you laser etch them, there is little tiny bits of metal. So now I'm scratching it off so I can paint it. So that's fun. But I have no idea where my keys are. What's it? What's it? What's it? You get it? Go get it. Oh, you got it. You got that sprinkler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got it. Look at the pretty sky, Papa. So it is now Sunday. I started this video on Friday, but I got a bit distracted with these yesterday, so I didn't actually um, answer any questions. This is my third set of making these, and this took just as long as hand drawing them. Not even gonna lie. You could probably just leave it like this, to be honest. I will finish that later on. So I can film this video, I just ordered breakfast. I put up another story, got some more questions. Please, if I don't answer your question and you did it, ask a question, feel free to ask me that question in my message. Okay, my food is here. One of the very first questions I got asked was they wanted to hear a really good 45 minute rant about people saying their cars are legal when they aren't. Since working in the industry, I've had my eyes open to a lot. What I'm seeing a lot of the time is people who take their cars to businesses to get all these modifications done are being told that their car has been fully engineered, it's gone through all the correct testing. These customers are being charged for this engineering work. It's not been done. <laughs> it's been lied about being done. Somebody's been charged for it being done. However, it never got done. People out there who think their cars are completely legal and they've been engineered and they've been tested when they haven't. So it's not really those people's fault because they, they were just a customer really. It's like dodgy roadworthy. You get a dodgy roadworthy guy, he signs off on a dodgy roadworthy. So you say your car's roadworthy when it's not. <laughs> you would like to trust that when you get told it is by somebody who you've paid money to, that it is. But unfortunately, there's a lot of untrustworthy people in the world. It's sad because people save their whole lives to build the car of their dreams to be told that it now can't be registered really because it's been molested so far to the point it can't be roadworthy. It's really sad to see. If you're going somewhere and the price is too good to be true, there's probably a reason for that. Engineering and test procedures do take a certain amount of money. So if something seems really cheap, it's probably because they've left out a big part of what you need. Just know that like you can go and look up the laws. You don't have to rely on what people are saying online. You don't have to listen to word of mouth or what old mate said. There's exceptions to everything. Don't use exceptions that you see as a rule and just look up the laws for yourself because they are all there. Somebody asked is social media hard work and when I wrote this down I was like oh yeah I'll say yes it's hard work that'll be my answer to that one. I was kind of like answering them in my head as I went. And now that I'm thinking about it, no. <laughs> There's a difference between people working hard and hard work. I worked at the sugar mill in Mackay. We worked in the lab. You would like go out to get samples. 2 a.m. you're on a night shift, you'd go out and you'd see like the diesel fitter, the supervisor, and they were all underneath this machinery. The mill is designed to be running full time, crushing, that's its job. So when it's not doing that, people are cranky. <laughs> 
And now, as a diesel mechanic, I understand that stress that you would have because you don't always have all the answers. And when you're doing that at two in the morning and you're covered in shit and your supervisor's there and everyone's like relying on you to fix this machine, it's hard. That, I, that is hard work, it's physically demanding. Nothing is easy to undo, things easy to do up. Everything is heavy, everything is covered in shit. It's hard work. Social media, if I think of everything I did, is not hard work, not in that sense at all. I'm not saying everyone can do social media because they can't. I see lots of people start doing it and give up because it takes massive commitment, massive dedication and massive motivation. So that's hard and a lot of people can't do that because they're like, oh, I just wanted to do this as a side hobby. If your motivation is to just get some free shit and be famous, you're, it's not gonna work. That's stupid. Like, I can't sit here and go, oh, you guys know how hard I've worked for, like, no, no. I, this is not hard work. This is, this is work consistently. That's it. It ain't no fixing a truck on the side of the road. It ain't no being up inside a piece of machinery at two in the morning. It is not that. <laughs> What's the go with sponsored stuff on YouTube? Sponsored stuff in general across YouTube and Instagram, you have to announce that. But pretty much if you don't have complete control over what you're posting, i.e. someone's told you put a product in it or when to post or where to post, if they paid for it, if there's any outside influence into what you're posting, that's sponsored, that's advertising. Gifts and things like that, they recommend you word it that says, these people have gifted me this, they've sent me this, you can put hashtag free give. YouTube, there's a tick box, so it says this video contains sponsored products. So you tick that and it gives a little notification at the start of the video so that people watching it know that there's a sponsored product. Would you actually buy the products with your own money? I think one of the most important things to remember is not everybody is the same. It's not like you become an influencer and you get handed a list of rules that you gotta follow. Be trustworthy, don't lie, don't take things just for money. You know that people can lie online, right? Very easily. This is not my full-time job. I like working, learning, progressing, building new skills. And the money that I earn from social media, I put back into social media. So I have no reason to accept work because I don't need it to make a living, right? I, there's no temptation there for me at all. The ones you do see, it's not because they're the ones that offered the most. I'll just do it because I love it and I want you guys to see stuff that I love. As I've said in past videos, I've never emailed a company or a brand and asked them to work together, to collab. I've never asked for products. I like, just know nothing. If a brand organically finds me and then they want to work together, that's good, right? Like that. That means I'm doing something right. I don't know, I understand people who do this for a living have to branch out and do that kind of stuff to get work. But because I don't do this for a living, I have no need to do that. I have no need to force any relationships at all. A lot of the times it's because I already own the products. For example, I did paid videos for Ryko. And it's because I, I'm assuming, <laughs> I did a video of my oil service, right? And I used Ryko filters because I've been using Ryko filters for years. I'm assuming they just saw that, right? Like through their marketing agency and they were like, we, we work with you. So we did, because I've used their products before. So it was a no brainer to say, yes, I'm happy to promote your products because I love your products. When I look at somebody, I think very little about if they paid for it or not, because I don't care if you got gifted it by your mom. I don't care if it came in your Santa sack. I don't care. I care if you're a trustworthy person. I care if you've done your research. It's the good part of being a content creator is that you have these opportunities to work with brands and products that you normally wouldn't because you're a responsible person who's saving for a car or saving for a house or saving for something. And it lets me be able to share a heap of different things with you guys that I, as in just a normal everyday girl on a normal wage, would not be able to. I'm not saying that the product is overpriced and that I wouldn't buy it anyway, I guess comes down to the individual. Usually I'll just receive a product and I'll try it. If I don't like it, I'll contact the business and say, hey, 
this didn't work, I didn't like this. And the product either gets sent back or they go, okay, that's that's no dramas, just, just keep it. The point, I guess, of my channel is to share products with you guys and then you guys decide. It's not me forcing it on you and saying all the rest of shit, buy this. One little view of one product from one industry and showcasing it. And it doesn't mean that you have to get it. And if I don't like the product, you guys won't see it. If I don't like a product, somebody else might. So I'm not gonna put up a bad review of a product. If people message me and say, hey, what did you think of this? Yes, 100%, I'm honest with that person. But there's no need for me to put out a review to 100,000 people that could be me being biased or me because I have an old car and things are weird on old cars. You know, like there could be any number of factors that are personal to me about why the product didn't work for me. You're not gonna know until you personally use and review a product because it can be completely different to what somebody says, whether they're telling the truth or they're bullshitting you. And I have so many products in the storage room that you just didn't see because it's just not good. So I understand why people think that, you know, I just love everything I'm given, but in reality, it's probably about 10% because I don't love everything and I wouldn't buy everything. Somebody asked, how do you promote YouTube with less than 100 subscribers? And then do you think your YouTube has done well because of Instagram? I did some math on this because I was actually intrigued. I think I've done like 35 videos, not counting shorts or anything like that. Out of the 2 million views on my channel, only 22,000 views came from Instagram. That's from me like sharing a story and putting a swipe up link. Only 22,000 views have ever amassed from doing any of that. So the exposure helps, 100%. The more people know about you, the more people that are gonna be searching you on YouTube. Don't dismiss the YouTube algorithm. You don't need a lot of followers for a YouTube video to go completely like viral on YouTube. But then them just clicking on it does nothing, right? Like they've got to stick around. So if you have a really boring intro, like the first 20 seconds, that's bad, they're gonna leave. Your hashtags matter, keywords matter, keywords in your title matter. Is your title something that people are searching for? There's a lot of things that you can do that you don't need subscribers for at all. A lot of the times people who are watching my videos on YouTube are not people who are subscribed. People that click the notifications from being subscribed, that's not a lot either. So a lot of those views are coming from YouTube putting my video up in people's suggested videos or browse features or on the home page and then new people clicking it. So yeah, don't get discouraged you don't have a lot of followers. Don't stop building other platforms to try and help, but at the end of the day, YouTube can do it all on its own for you. Somebody asked, how did you see your life panning out at 18? Anything you'd change? If I was to go back, I would not waste my time for three years doing uni and I would have just gone and gotten a trade straight away. I think now I would love to go back to uni because I'm just older and, and I understand a bit better about the relevance of a degree and I'm more motivated and I have a better idea of my life, you know. Any aspect of your life you aren't willing to share with social media, if yes, why? Don't like share everything, but if people ask, I share it. In, in real life, in social settings, I'm a pretty reserved person. I'm not somebody who comes into work on a Monday and go and tell everyone my life story, you know? Some people are and that's fine. I'm just, I'm not open like that. And unless somebody asks, I'm of the opinion that people don't give a shit, right? Like, people got their own crap to worry about. So I'm not gonna burden you with my life crap. <laughs> All right, somebody said main gripe with the four-wheel drive community. You get to meet a lot of people working here, meet a lot of people that have been in, I guess, the automotive world for a very long time. The people that know the most and are the most experienced in things are not online. They're just not, right? People that know the least and are the least experienced are very loud on social media. And it's hard in the four-wheel drive community, especially when you're starting out, to have all these people who know very little but are very loud. They can kind of make you feel a bit shit sometimes. I think I've well and truly passed this. I just laugh about it now. But when you're a young person starting out and somebody's having a go at you about what you did to your bull bar or what sort of car you bought in the first place, it, it can be real demotivating. I honestly just wish people would just keep to themselves. It's not your car. It doesn't matter what they do to it. If it makes them happy, let them do it. In terms of like the actual four wheel drive community, when you're out and about and you run into other four wheel drivers, everyone I've ever met has been lovely. The only real issues I've ever had with four wheel driving communities has always been online. And it's always just because 
people think they're entitled to their opinion online when nobody asked for it. <laughs> Top three worst things about being a social media influencer. I don't even think there's three, really. It's people assuming, that's it. That's, that's all I really care about. <laughs> I'm somebody, when I don't know something, I won't try and talk about it. And when 99% certain I know something, I'll still go and look it up to check, right? So I couldn't understand how people got so much confidence. People would just be like, no, you're wrong. About things that I've done to my own car, like real specific things. Were you there? Were you hiding in the corner? Like, how can you be so sure of something that you have no information on. Some people just troll because they're trolling, right? But some people just genuinely think that they're right. No matter how confident you are on a topic, there can always be something you didn't think of or something you didn't know. That is the biggest thing I deal with on a daily, assuming lots of things. You're young, you don't know. You're a girl, you don't know. You've got this, you don't know. Like a lot of people are very quick to assume. I think if everyone just assumed that they didn't know everything, that would be great. That would be really great online if everyone assumed that. <laughs> really hot in here now. I'm gonna go back to painting these. If you guys enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. As I said earlier, there's only like 40% of people that watch my videos are actually subscribe. That would mean a lot if you guys subscribed. And leave a comment. Anything that I talked about, if you have your own thoughts on any of those topics, drop them down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna get back to painting. Okay, bye. Psych, I'm not gone. I finished these mud flaps. When you're searching hard and it seems to lead to nowhere, no matter where you are, no, I'll always be there. You don't ever have to look too far, you don't have to cover. Open up my heart and you'll find You don't ever have to look too far You don't have to cover up your scars You're perfect, darling, just the way you are So before you think to rip yourself